Hello everyone, I'm Bart Wacławik. Today we're going to talk about the Voler Sim Flight Racing Simulation Chassis. And specifically, I would like to talk a little bit more about the flight simulation side uh, of this uh, chassis. Give you some ideas about the configurability and adjustability uh, of this cockpit. And then we're also going to talk about uh, different ways you can mount various uh, flight simulation accessories uh, with this cockpit. First, let's uh, talk about the overall size that is required uh, to put this whole thing together. And um, I think best thing to do is to put it in a corner, uh, whether you're thinking about putting it in your basement, in your den, heck, maybe you want to put it in your living room, you need about five by five, five feet by five feet, kind of a square. Best to do it again in a corner because you can push everything against the wall, especially with the three monitors, and everything is going to be out of the way. And I think it's also very important uh, to make sure that everything is kind of streamlined out of the way, especially if you're trying to convince your wife or your significant other to let you uh, get one of those. We spent a lot of time at Voler Sim to make sure that you can make it, uh, you can make the, to make the cockpit so it's uh, you know uh, very aesthetically pleasing, uh, streamlined. All of these cables can be routed out of the way, so it doesn't look like a big rat's nest uh, full of uh, full of wires running everywhere. So I'm sure uh, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Monitors, uh, three monitors. You will get the mounts standard for the three. You don't have to buy them separately. It's all included, and that goes for all of the other mounts. We don't charge you extra for anything. We give you everything for the for one price. And the three monitors up to 32 inches. This is uh, three monitors that are 27 inches in diagonal mounted here. Let me just give you a word of an advice. Um, if you're thinking about three monitor configuration and you do not have three monitors already, you may want to, after you buy your Valer SIM, be that the three monitors being your second purchase. And here's why. If you decide to just buy one and then buy the two later, you may find out that they've been discontinued then you have to buy something that just doesn't quite look the same. The bezel size is not going to be the same or it's not going to give you this uniform appearance. So unfortunately that's something you might want to think about. The good news is you know the uh, monitor prices have come down so much significantly uh, over the last few years that you know you can buy three monitors for you, what it used to cost uh, you know to buy just one. Uh, everything else really you can buy you know, as you grow into this hobby uh, or as you see it fit, but the monitors is something to keep in mind. Don't make the same mistake as I have, uh, and then, uh, you, you know, you just, uh, you're not just going to have the look, you're not going to be happy with it. As far as the adjustability of it, you can move the monitor side to side and you can move the whole thing up and down so that the monitor's at uh, your eye level. The monitor mounts are what's called Visa standard, not like the Visa credit card, but like the Visa industry standard for the monitors. And if, as long as your monitors have four kind of square pattern in the back, they kind of look like a, four bolts, they'll fit here because it's an industry standard and we even give you the screws to put this whole thing together. So just, if you're buying those or if you have them already, just look in the back, make sure that, that you have those four holes. Um, you should because that's kind of everybody's doing it that way, but just make sure. Okay, so uh, that's the monitors. Now about this work table and uh, and the avionics package. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail because we didn't get into it uh, in the last video. Uh, first of all, uh, this work table is height adjustable. Okay, so you can move it up and down again to suit your preference and your you know your um, your body frame size. And you can also actually, which is haven't shown in the last video, you can adjust this angle here about 25 degrees. You can tilt it towards you. Reason for that is if you have some kind of uh, setup where you want to have a monitor that's kind of simulate maybe a ga uh, gauge package that you want to tilt it towards you, you can do that up to 25 degrees. Second thing is this whole thing is mounted with uh, four bolts, but there's two sets of mounting locations, so you can actually move this closer to the monitors or closer towards you, depending how you like it. We made this work table relatively wide, wide, so you can actually use it as a desk actually, take this whole thing off and use it as a desk, or you can put all of your other stuff behind it, like your speakers for instance, like we have it here. 
speaking about the yolks and, and, and avionics, it is the only cockpit and the first cockpit that I know of that is factory pre-configured for SciTech uh, components, which, which means that you've got all of these holes and mounting locations already done for you so you don't have to break out your drill. And all you got to do is uh, take the fasteners, take the screws that they give you when you buy the yoke or the, uh, the avionics and just bolt it all together. Um, if you have the Siege product yoke, uh, which is also a very fine product, uh, it'll work as well. And you can use the clamp, you know. I prefer this uh, solid location, solid mounting, and the reason for that is it just feels more solid. And by the way, when you see any of this stuff wobbly during the video, uh, just keep in mind I've loosened all of these adjustment nuts to kind of show you what it, this cockpit can do. So don't feel like you're going to get it home and it's all going to be all, 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 uh, uh, wobbly. Uh, we, we really uh, designed this cockpit with quality. Uh, even though it's the world's most affordable cockpit, we really um, everything's made out of a lightweight steel and everything is durable. That seat is straight out of the race car, so don't you don't think for a second that we compromise on the quality here uh, with any of this stuff. It's it's really designed to uh, to to last a long time. Okay, the uh, let's talk about the avionics package real quickly because if you're a pilot, you know you want to uh, you, you might want to do, uh, do something uh, to uh, resemble a, a real aircraft. Cytex make, makes what I think is pretty affordable line of all these different avionics and accessories. That's why we decided to kind of uh, pre-configure it for Cytex. Uh, and the way we have it set up here is, is typical of a general aviation aircraft, right? So you've got a, a COM pa panel on the left and you've got a NAV panel here on the right. You've got a switch panel here underneath and then you've got an autopilot setup on the right. Now, question. Uh, where should you start? What should, should you start with? Um, and I think as long as you've got the yoke, which obviously is the number one purchase, uh, then you probably are, need to think about the con. The reason for that is it's so much more convenient to do it with, uh, with this than the keyboard and you can switch and you can set it up for com actually and you can have the bottom for nav. So you can actually have a nav com type of a setup. After that, I think you might want to think about the autopilot. I think that's a really nice one, especially if you're doing instrument approaches, uh, so that you can put it on autopilot and then, just like in a real airplane, brief yourself on the approach, get your charts, get your uh, approach plates out, and uh, get everything set up for the approach. Uh, and that works pretty well. It also has a flap here, uh, um, knob here, so you can use it for, for flaps. I've got a nav, second nav here because I basically have it COM1, COM2, you know, that's for your ATIS and for AOS and the, the, the two navs. Or the second nav I sometimes use for my transponder code if I'm flying online. Uh, I use it for my transponder code um, or something like a DME maybe readout. Um, so that's that's how I have it set up here. This back uh, BIP, they call it, I think, back lid instrument panel or something like that, say they call, uh, is, uh, calls it. This is for uh, showing you the, uh, it's like an annunciator panel, basically what it is. So you've got your uh, indications. I've got a nav, you've got nav GPS mode, so I've got nav mode, COM1 active, beacon strobe lights. Uh, so everything you turn on, it basically shows you here. It's a, it's a nice, um, nice um, add-on, not necessary. Uh, some people here, they would put a six pack, right? So the SciTech makes those little gauges, so you can put your six pack in here. And then you can mount this maybe off to the left or to the right. Last is that uh, switch panel here. Uh, this is also, I think, pretty nifty because you've got your gear, uh, gear uh, lever and then you've got all of your switches. So really, when I'm flying, I set it up with my keyboard, you know, or I'm flying, my flight plan and everything. But then once I'm, once I'm uh, on, the, uh, on the ground, like here, I no longer touch the keyboard really throughout the flight. And that's, I think, what you need to be looking for. I mean, when you fly an air, airplane, real airplane, you don't have a keyboard in your cockpit. So this is set up to really make you feel like uh, the real deal. A little about this keyboard tray. Again, uh, a must, I think, for flight simulation and even for racing because, you know, you got to be able to set this whole thing up before you get uh, start flying. Enough space here if you had a mouse, so you can put your mouse here. Maybe you want to put an iPad here. I've got a little, this little keyboard here with a touchpad but I made it big enough so that you can have a mouse here and fully articulated, right? So you can move it like this and also move it up and down here, right? So this knob loosens here and then you can move it up and down like this. OK, 
Okay, so uh, depending on your height, you're not gonna hit yourself in the knees, but you can move it so it will clear that work table. On the right hand side, the right mount is for your throttle quadrant and for your trim wheel. And if you're flying multi-engine, you can put two of those throttle quadrants, quadrants together. Uh, so you have your left and right engine controls and your trim wheel. I think trim wheel is a must, you know, especially if you're flying general aviation, you're really flying with a trim. So you want to have it mounted so it's handy. Um, rudder pedals. <clears throat> rudder pedals are designed for both the CH products and for Cytec, and other ones will fit. There's enough room in there. I think every rudder pedal we tested, it, it, it works no problem. Mounting of this is via Velcro, and we provide the Velcro, so you put two Velcro strips, strips and you attach it, and it's rock solid. It's not going anywhere. Um, for racing, you'll see in the other video, we actually pre-drilled the whole location. So if you have a Logitech G27, um, you can actually hard, hard bolt it in. But rudder pedals, I think Velcro works just as well. And there are detents on this tray, so you can move it up and down like this, you see. Uh, and then you can, there are little, little detents, so you can move it vertically or I'll put it flat on the floor. Uh, for aircraft, typically you have it in a more of a vertical orientation, like in a real airplane. So that's the uh, that's the pedal tray. On the right, on, on the left hand side, I'm sorry, you have the uh, the other mount that's standard again. You don't have to buy that separately, and that's if you're flying the plane that's got a stick on the left, uh, say Cirrus, or if you want to have a place to put your iPad, your approach plates your charts, uh, you know, something that is handy to you. Again, just like all the other ones, adjusts fully, okay, and with these knobs you basically just tighten it uh, after you're done. And uh, it's got the whole um, patterns, uh, just like the other, like the other mount. So it's basically like a mirror image. Um, seat, a fully adjustable forward and aft, and um, the seat uh, allows you also to adjust the angle, so you're, you're comfortable. Again, just like I mentioned, this is a real racing seat. It's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, uh, it's very comfortable. It's. Uh, it's got a lever here, just like a car seat, so you can uh, you can get in the cockpit and then just adjust it into a into a comfortable seating position. As far as the uh, the, the overall cockpit, you've got these two knobs here on the bottom, and you can stretch the cockpit. So accommodates uh, people from about uh, 48 inches to uh, six and a half feet. So pretty wide range. Uh, I uh, have my children using this cockpit, and uh, they fit here uh, pretty pretty well. Uh, and uh, you know, they just adjust the seat. Uh, it's probably all it takes. But if you are on the short side, uh, you can actually shrink it a little bit so you're you're comfortable. I think I covered all of the features, all of the adjustability here. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to uh, send us an email uh, and visit us at uh, volairsim.com and watch for more videos. Uh, next video we will uh, actually take you on a flight and we'll show you how this whole thing works in practice. Uh, and then um, we're also going to show you another setup uh, with Volair Sim setup for racing. Uh, where we're going to mount the G27 wheel from uh, Logitech uh, on this and we're going to show you uh, the same cockpit in a racing configuration. So you can uh, alternate from, uh, uh, you know, from flying to racing if you, if you like to, to do both. Again, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, visit us on uh, volairsim.com. Thanks.